Hey guys, super glad you're back with us. It's live at the loft here on Wednesday night. Again, it's an empty room. We're sorry that you're not here with us. Uh, we miss you greatly, but hopefully you'll enjoy the show that we've got planned for you. Tonight, we're going to go into the second part of our Focus 5 equals Fruitful Lives. And uh, before we get into that, let's start with a word of prayer and we'll see what God does. Father, we love you. We're so excited to serve you, and especially during this Easter week. We pray that you would uh, make your love known to us in a unique way, personally, and also as a ministry and within our families. Father, help us to have times of laughter and learning tonight, and help us to do all that uh, will encourage us individually, but also encourage our families and our church family and those around the globe. We do pray for those on the front lines of this virus. We pray that you continue to protect them, watch over them, and please help those who have lost loved ones during this difficult time in our nation and our global history. Jesus, we love you. Help us to love others for you. And may we live a life that makes you smile. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So one of the things we're going to do in the show tonight is uh, we're going to talk about family. But one of the things we're going to talk about is how you can have fun. So Aaron and I are going to go head to head playing uh, for these little hot tamale peeps and purple peeps and all these other things um, in a great simple game called Funnel Pong. So we're going to speed this up for you. You can watch and see how we play, but we're going to play best of three. <laughs> I'm and really see, bad. See so this is going to be a while. All right. So one at a time, you get three strikes and you're out kind of thing. So I will let you go first. Oh, man. I get to go first. Okay. Yeah. Let's try this. Oh. Case okay. Terrible. Aaron struck out three times right there. All right. I got one. Oh. Go. I want to strike out three times. Oh, I got it. Oh, that's not good. The goal is to get three in a row, vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. Oh, so, I'm not, I'm not good at this one, game, Casey. First one to win gets a bunny or a tamale. Ooh, I'm getting close, Aaron. Oh, I'm close. Come on, come on. I did it. Where? Oh, nice. Aaron's <laughs> yes. got one. Aaron's got one. I got one point. Woo! Grab a prize. Oh, Grab my goodness. I mean, I like spicy things, so I'm, I'm going with the hot tamale peeps. I'll let nice. you guys know how these go. Later. I guess I don't really know. I'll just uh, throw those over here. All right, as winner, you get to go first. At least first again. Play. Yep. Okay, nice. Nice. Three. Woohoo! Darn it! <laughs> okay. Yeah. One to one. It's one to this one. Decide all of this it. This decides all of it right this here. Decide all of okay. it. Okay. You get that. Oh my goodness. You get your own ping pong. <laughs> these are these are mine. Those are yours. All, all right. right. You go first. Yes. Purple. Here we go. Oh, he's I've going lost. with the peeps. I've lost the ball, but there. Yeah. ultimate victor that really stinks <laughs> um that's right i've never played this before so we'll just say he's played more often than me play a i don't afternoon. know oh my goodness well anyway we've got a great show for you hopefully you enjoy it but uh, play some games with your family play, play some games if you uh, have the opportunity on a rainy day but um looking forward to seeing what you think of the show we love you we miss you All right, guys. Well, welcome back for our game for tonight. And uh, this week I got Casey with me to help us with the game tonight. And as you can tell from the screen, we are doing some awkward family memories. Um, our topic for tonight is family, so I thought we'd do a fun little game about family. So we have some pictures of awkward family photos, and you guys are going to have 
probably about like five seconds to study your picture. And then you're gonna be presented with a question um, based on something inside the image. And then we'll give you guys a multiple choice. And um, we'll actually go ahead and give you guys the answer right away so we can see um, who has the best photographic memory, I guess. So uh, that'll be pretty fun. Um, obviously there's some pretty crazy photos in here. So uh, yep. I guess we'll, uh, we'll get started with uh, round number one. All right. So let's see. We oh, <laughs> mullet family. The mullet family, looking good. The classic oh, look, ace. It was that fast. That fast. That fast. Do you know what color the dad's shirt was? All right. Let's see. What what options do you have? We got pink, white, blue, or yellow. All right, what do you think? You can play with your your family if they're in the room, or just by yourself, maybe if you're in your bedroom. And here you will have the answer. Is White. A white shirt. There you go. Yep. Of course. It's a beautiful look, that family. That's, I think that's uh, what most people are going to look like now. <laughs> they can't go and get their cut. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're Social distancing. We're all going to have mullets. What all a right, great look. Get, uh, round two here. All right. This is going to be a fast image. Woo, oh, baby. What a family idea. Yeah, that's a beauty. All right. How many smiling kids were there? You get the two. Many kids there were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're. All right. So you're. So you got one, two, three, or four. I mean, pretty easy choices there. Yep. You were probably taken aback by the rainbow oh. look, but hopefully that wasn't distracting because there is a specific number, and the number is four. They're also, they're actually all having yeah. a good time. Yeah, I'm sure all those kids were proud of that photo as they got older. That, <laughs> that is a beauty. Yeah, do that when they're younger. Yeah, they do it when they're younger. Don't revolt from that. All right, number three. Let's see. Ooh, yep. there's some lovely <laughs> Big hair. Yeah, looking good. How many candles were on the table? What? I didn't even, I got to be honest, didn't see candles. Didn't I was looking at the table at all. I was taken back by the beautiful. One, two, three, or four. Again, floral plat pattern. Oh, my God. I don't think anyone's going to get this one. Yeah. If you get this one, congratulations to you. All right, let's see what our answer. Woo, two, Woo. right there. Oh, yeah, they're up in the, yeah. they're on the, the corner over here. Yeah. Oh my That's a beautiful That's big hair. I'm just gonna say big hair and beautiful floral. Oh my goodness! Feel bad for that dad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number four. Let's see what it is. That's special. <laughs> that is special. What a what a lovely family. What <laughs> <laughs> was on the centaur's arm? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> this is an interesting yeah, family. Yeah. I'm gonna say. <laughs> Uh, we got duct tape, flowers, tattoo, or money. Yeah. What do you guys think he had on his arm? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, let's find out what our answer is. That was a disturbing photo. Money. <laughs> money. I don't yeah. think your daughter's having a good time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She is proud to be a part of that family right there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right, this is the last round. Last round. Last round. Let's, let's end it well. Oh, that's not disturbing. Oh, my goodness. Why would you have a puppet in there? That is, uh, what color were the dummy's socks? <laughs> not looking at that. Depends on who you call the dummy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, White, blue, red, or he wasn't wearing socks. Uh, Do puppets wear socks? I don't know. I don't know. Feet, I don't know. Socks? Oh, that's, my that's a good question, Bob. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and see what our answer is. Red. Red. You can barely yeah, see Yeah, that's, that's not a fair question. Oh, but you can barely see those. The hair on the one to the puppet's right is pretty impressive. Oh, that, my goodness. That is some serious hairnet or something. I don't know what that is, but that's impressive. That must have been a humid day or something. That's pretty. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, here's what we'd like you to do. Aaron will explain to you. We've got a little challenge for you and your family. So, yeah, so we want you guys to take some amazing, awkward family photos. Um, you're obviously spending a lot of time with your family right now. Um, so I've seen some photos of you guys getting dressed up for, uh, for Sunday and everything, but let's see you guys make some awkward family photos and share those with us on Instagram or Facebook, whatever is easier for you and your parents. And uh, we'll showcase probably our like top five or something. 
um, next week during our uh, Live at the Loft show. Yep, you'll see the top five next week. Yep. And if we don't get enough, we'll just keep showing you all kinds of pictures of Aaron and Jamie and all kinds of weird photos. So I'm sure we can take some weird photos. <laughs> well, we hope you like the Awkward Family Game, and uh, we're on to the next part of the show. We'll see you in a bit. Thanks for playing, guys. Well, hello, everyone. It's good to see you. We're back in our series on Wednesday nights and the focus five equaling fruitful lives. And tonight uh, we're going to talk about family. Last week we talked about faith. If you didn't see that, I would encourage you to go see that. Um, but we're going to begin with a word of prayer. We're going to see what God does. Let's pray together. Father, again, we come before you uh, wishing that we could be together. But for this season of life, we need to uh, be safer at home. And we pray for all those who are struggling in their uh, physical health and spiritual health right now. And I pray, Lord, that uh, during this Easter season, you would do a great work in each of our hearts and the hearts of people around the world. And I pray that many people would come to know your son, Jesus Christ, as their savior, and that their life would uh, further understand the depths of your love for each and every one of us. And as we live out that love, it will help us do this topic of family in a way that allows us the privilege to be wealthy because we follow your lead. Help us, Lord, to learn what you want us to learn and help us to uh, give uh, you the glory from any fruit that comes from our life. We pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as I mentioned, uh, tonight's topic is family. And if you look at your handout, hopefully you uh, took, took advantage of the opportunity to get that from our website. If you didn't, I would encourage you to pause because uh, you'll get more out of this session if you actually follow the handout. Uh, but we'll look at uh, this topic, and I want to give you a little background. Some of you might know who I am, some of you might not. Um, my background in family has, I was blessed to grow up in a very Christ-centered home. I love my parents. I love all of my siblings. I'm the oldest of six kids. We're all about four years apart. And then I have my baby sister, Kaylee. Um, so there's about 20 years between the two of us. So I'm the oldest of the six kids. She has five older brothers, and um, she's my baby sister. And uh, then my wife and I, Debbie and I, are blessed to have seven children. And uh, our oldest is about to get married uh, this summer. And our youngest is in first grade. And a little shout out to my son, Drew, who's turning 19 today. So I have a lot of experience just within my own family and uh, the family that the Lord has allowed Debbie and I to create and uh, enjoy. And I pray that as we go through this study, through the experience of both those families, but also I've been working in sports ministry and family ministry related areas for the last 25, 30 years. So I've seen a lot of families and I've seen what works and what doesn't work. And so I'm going to go through in a very quick way tonight um, some of the things that I pray will encourage your family as it relates to uh, what you're currently experiencing in your family, but also the family that God's prepared you to be ready for when you start a family of your own as a middle schooler, as a high schooler, as a college student. So look at your handout and you'll think of uh, this question. When you think of family, what do you think of? When you and I think of this idea of family, there's a great quote from George Bar Barna. He says, family is certainly not dead in America, but it looks and behaves very differently than it used to. When you and I take the time to understand that God has a design for family and we rightly understand his design and rightly pursue his direction, we will enjoy the right results. We'll understand what love looks like. We'll understand what servanthood looks like. And we're going to have some fun talking about that tonight. So I want you to think about what it think, when you think of family, what do you think of? Do you have positive experiences, negative experiences? Probably a mixture of both in certain seasons of life. There is no perfect family. All of us struggle with family. It takes work to be a good family. But in this community pause button, as we've been talking about, this safer at home season, we got a great opportunity to really invest in our family that we're currently in, in ways that will prepare us for our future days in family and your future families that God will create for you. So what is the definition of family? God created the family. It was his idea. Therefore, as the creator, he gets to define what family is, and the created do not. So in the synthesis of Scripture, I think Charles Stanley has a pretty good definition of family. He says, it's one man and one woman united in marriage for life, and if God so chooses, children either biological or adopted. That's a biblical definition of family. Jesus redefined family, though, in a section of Scripture in Luke 8. 19 through 21, you read in your handout, Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. 
Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside waiting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. Jesus does a, a simple thing, but a pretty strategic thing in saying that the true family is the family of God that comes to understand that God loves them, seeks to redeem them, and then in the process, allow them to gather together as a true family, people who seek to be obedient to God's design. So as you and I will think through different things, I want you to think about these scriptures. There's a number of scriptures. There's so many hallways we could go down on this topic. But in their family scriptures, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9 is one of the leading ones. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. The family is a workshop for you to be trained in the truth or discover you're going to be lied to many times. So guys, as I've told you before in the loft, you have a responsibility to do the spiritual work that God wants you to do right now because you are called to be the spiritual leaders of your house. You're to be the lead person who prays for your family, protects your family, trains them in the truth, and that starts in your training right now because the healthiest families that I have seen over the course of 25, 30 years generally have one thing in common. There's a man who seeks to serve his family by following the lead of the Savior. And in the process of that, God's doing that in your heart right now, I pray, that you will man up and do the things that God calls you to do as a man, to pray for your family and to do the things that we're going to talk about in detail. Ladies, in a similar way, when you're blessed to have a family of your own, you're going to have an emotional uh, thermostat that God's given you to read the room of your family in terms of the hearts of your kids or your husband or people around you. God's given a gift to women to read the atmosphere of a room that helps everybody in the room feel better about themselves and be encouraged. And so as you think through this, the, the Proverbs 31 section that we've talked about many times, the attributes of that godly woman is something that you should also aspire to and understand because you one day will have a family of your own and you're going to want to care for that family in a way that is Christ-centered. In my family, we have a picture right above the fireplace. It's a picture, it's a painting of Jesus um, laughing slash smiling. And it's a great reminder to me and to all of our family that he's the head of our house, that he's the one that we take our cues from. He's the one that's going to teach us how to love. He's going to be the one that teaches us how to live. And it's a good reminder for all of us because when our family is designed in such a way to follow his lead, he creates in us a foundation and a freedom that only God could give. And that's a little bit of what we're going to talk about. You're going to see in the next section in Matthew 13, 1 through 23, we talked a little bit about this at the uh, retreat, the winter retreat chill fest, this parable of the sower concept. The challenge of a family is this, you don't have to listen to God. You can do whatever you like, and people tend to do that on a, on a consistent basis. But if you surrender to him and ask for his leadership, he's going to teach you from going to negative math life to positive math life. And we talked a little bit about that, this, this idea that there's baggage to everybody's life. And if you think you can hide from that baggage, you're wrong. That baggage will beat your life up for years until you have the courage to repent of that baggage, learn from that baggage, and be retooled by the truth in ways that make you presently stronger and your family stronger and your future family stronger. And in the process of that, it's very important that you understand, as we have some stuff in your notes here, choosing to obey the God who has a far greater bandwidth on life than you do. We shouldn't sit and tell him what to do. We should surrender to listening to what he wants us to do. And as we do that, he'll teach us how to be a good member of the family we're currently in, to not be selfish, to not be sitting here complaining about stuff that we could maybe be the solution to, and not asking our parents to do every single thing for us as if we need to be babysat even in middle school and high school. Show yourself to be responsible. Show yourself to grow in maturity and start growing in a way that people can give you more responsibility because you're demonstrating a level of responsibility and maturity by following the lead of Christ. He'll grow you in his character. And because of it, people's lives will be changed and it will start with you. And so when you see these things on the parable of the sower, God wants you to produce a crop yielding 160 or 30 fold. 
as you follow his lead, I promise you, your family and the fruit of your family could have exponential impact on both the church and the community, not to mention your own lives. So we're going to go through a couple strategies. We're going to talk about some things, and I want to encourage you to recognize none of us will be perfect in any of these, but we're going to do our best. So the first one is pray together. Pray together is a key part of you and I understanding that we pr prayer creates a dependency on God and on each other that helps us care for one another spiritually and in life. It's interesting the scripture says in Mark 1 35, very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Luke 5 16, Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed. There's some quotes under there related to um, from Billy Graham and Jonathan Edwards you can look at. But a man and a woman who pray and people who pray in their family, they multiply the workforce, as we've t said in the past. This idea that when we pray before God, God gives us a strength that supersedes any strength that we can bring to the equation. And he helps us care for people. He helps us anticipate things that need to be done. So I want to challenge you in this area. To under life application, I want to challenge you to pray that God's presence, peace, and power are experienced in your life because you pray consistently and expectantly. You expect God to answer prayers, maybe not in the way that you might think they should be answered, but as a loving father, he will answer prayer. And the more specific we are, the more he gets the glory. So I want to encourage you, the secondly, to create a strategic prayer, prayer, prayer list for your family, but also for your own life. And as you do that, I promise you, you will see growth in your life personally and, and in your family. Number two, play together. This is a huge part. So you got to pray together and pray for one another, but also play together. Play creates channels for laughter and love and learning in ways that allow the family to have fun together. We're going to talk a little bit more about this towards the end, but in the handout, I actually gave you um, a specific game that I would encourage you to play while we're all doing Safer at Home. Under this, you'll see in Ecclesiastes 5, 18 through 20, it says, Then I realized that it is good and proper for a man to eat and drink and to find satisfaction in his toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given him, for this is his lot. Verse 19, moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. Verse 20, he seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with gladness of heart. You and I should have opportunities to play together in our families. I have a couple of games that go in this game bag. This is a game bag that I have that has all kinds of different things um, from... Um, a ball that I bounce a lot when we go for family walks. It's a pretty sweet ball. Um, you can use that. This is a backpack uh, bocce game. It's pretty fun. You can play uh, both in your living room. Um, who doesn't love Nerf? This is a Nerf gun. See if I can hit you. Oh, almost. Um, and so you got all kinds of options that you can do. And as you play these games, we're going to talk more about that in a future session. You just laugh together. You love together. You kind of relax together. And it's really important to create a games bag that you can use both in your home or maybe you could take somewhere and just have a lot of fun and laugh together. If you do those things, I promise you it'll make a difference in your life. There's a game that um, I've given you in your handout. It's a baseball dice game. The handout looks something like this. It's a simple little game. Just get two dice. I've given you the directions. This is an old school game. I don't know if they make it anymore, uh, but I've played it with uh, my kids for years. And uh, basically, you just play three innings. And as you play it, you'll laugh together. And I've changed the, the rules of the game just to make it more fun. I do that a lot of times. So there's two options for a home run, and it's pretty fun. So most games are like scored on, into the 20s and 30s. Not a typical baseball game, but who cares? You're just having fun together, okay? So play together. Pray together, play together as a key part of life. Number three, persevere together. Perseverance creates a life momentum that gives you and your family a God-given strength and success. It's this idea that God wants you and I to persevere as a family, to not give up, to work hard for each other because life is hard. And having the home be a safe place to fail. Having the home to be a place that you can go share with a brother or a sister or a mom or a dad and just say, I didn't have a great day. Could you just listen to me for a little while? And when someone does that for you, it means a lot. But it's also important for you to do that for someone else. 
when you can read the room and you see that a sibling or someone in your family, maybe your mom or dad had a tough day uh, at work or whatever it might be, just say, hey, mom, dad, I appreciate what you do. If you want to listen, have someone listen, I'd be happy to listen what's going on. You might shock them, but it's a great form of love because when we're loved well, we'll, we'll persevere well. We'll work hard through the things. And so it says in the scripture, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. When we rightly understand love, we will persevere in a way that gives God glory. We're not going to give up when it gets tough. We're going to ask for him to give us strength, ask for him to help us understand how to care for someone we love that's going through a tough time. And in that process, God makes us stronger in him and stronger in our relationships for one another. Because if you're honest, most your key relationships in life, they're key because you've gone through some valleys together. You've gone through some difficulties together and you have fought and come out stronger. And I pray that happens to us in this safer at home season for both your family and for mine and all of us. You have James 1, 4, it says, Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Maturity takes work. why a lot of people don't pursue it. Immaturity is easy. It's lazy. And so you have to ask yourself the question, are you high maintenance in your family? Do people have to babysit you a lot because you just refuse to do dishes? You refuse to clean up your room. You refuse to show responsibility. (coughs) Excuse me. I enjoy cherry Coke. It's good. Anyway, you get to the point in your life where you ask yourself, Am I doing the things that bless my family or am I doing things that are constantly burdening my family? And a mark of maturity is say, you know what, I'm recognizing this area burdens my family. Lord, with your help, I want this to stop in my life so that I can transfer this burden into a blessing and I can be showing responsibility. So I want you to think about these questions. In a strong family that takes a lot of work, are you making your family stronger or are you making your family weaker by choices you make? You play a role in the health of your family. Don't be high maintenance. Be a person that the family as a whole says, man, we're so grateful to have him or her in our family because they bring such joy and encouragement to the family. What a great legacy that could be. You'll also see under life application, maturity in life comes by way of persistent movement in the will of God for the glory of God, equaling maturity in Christ. You and I can live a life that leads our family well by leading our own lives well. And so as we do that in persevering ways, God gets much glory. So I want you under this last application before we get to the fourth point, create some dreams as a family, possibly some experiences that you could pursue together, things that you could build or create at home during this time where we need to stay home, and then think through the things that you've done together already that you persevered in that you can think, you know, that was a good season of our family. It was tough, but we're stronger because of it. My family is blessed to enjoy some of those. We've, done, we've been blessed to do two additions to our house for strategically because of our seven kids in college and things like that. And we're reaping the benefits of some of those sacrifices we've made the last five, ten years. I'm re- reaping the benefits with my lovely wife, decisions we made very early on in our marriage, very narrow road type decisions, things that other people didn't necessarily applaud us for because it wasn't culturally cool. But Christ said, go this way. And now we're seeing the benefits of some of those sacrifices. And I pray you'll do the same because it's a blessing to be fruitful in ways that the Father says, well done, good and faithful servant. You're following my lead. That's a blessing. Your family gets stronger from it. Number four, finding purpose together. The purposeful living produces a passion for life because you follow the lead of the author of life. When you and I understand that having a purpose for life gives you this momentum, it should cause you to desire your quiet time with the king. Now, this is not something I'm saying to brag about things, but this has just been a practice of my life. I get up at about 5 a.m. most mornings. I go down to my study area, and I have a practice of being on my knees praying for my family by name. I have a practice of opening up this beautiful book and asking God to teach me how I can lead and shepherd my wife, my kids, this church, the different things that we do. And in that quiet reflection time, God does a lot in my life to help my life be purposeful, not to be wasteful in my time or talent or treasure, to ask him to multiply it. And God wants to do the same for you. So understanding that, we've talked about this verse many times, Proverbs 24, 3 through 4. By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. God wants your life to have rare and beautiful treasures in your family. You want to have things that preach, we love Christ, and our family is a Christ-centered home. 
Does that mean you have to make some changes? Yeah, always, me too. But I'm willing to make those changes because he's going to lead me in the direction to mature in love. And then you'll see in Proverbs 22, 4 through 6, I'll read verse 6, the one that most people like. Train a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not turn from it. In the Hebrew, the word train means bent, according to the way a person's bent. You have to just, you have to parent. If you parents are listening to this, you parent in a way, in such, such a way that it's w- the way God wired them to do these different things. And we're going to get to that in this fifth and final point. <coughs> Personality and individuality leads to a, a healthy family. You're going to see this idea that every person in a family has unique perspective and personality. Wise are we um, to study their language. And when we study their language, it makes us stronger in our ability to understand them, but also their ability to understand us. So for the sake of time, you can look at your handout. These are from Gary Chapman's book on the five love languages, the idea of words of affirmation, physical touch, quality time, acts of service, gifts. And then these are two additional ones I've added over the years that understanding a person's Sabbath rest language and their play language. Understanding the language of how someone likes to be paid in love is very important to the health of a family. Most people make the mistake of paying other people, whether it be in their marriage or in their relationship with others, in the way they like to be paid. Well, that's not love. Love is paying them in the way they would like to be loved. So for some people in your family, it might be words of affirmation. (coughs) For some of them, it might be quality time. Pray that God gives you wisdom on what that looks like for you and what it looks like for them. Because I firmly believe if you follow the practice of praying together, playing together, persevering together, finding purpose together, and understanding the personality, the individuality of of each other, I'm telling you, it's going to equal a family that lives fruitful lives individually and as a family, and God will get much glory. So as you think about these different things, I want to give you this one last thing to think about. What will you be proud to say you were a part of when it comes to your family? What role can you specifically play so that when years from now you're sitting at a Thanksgiving meal, people are going to reflect on a particular season of life that you really grew up and you significantly contributed to your family and the health of your family? You and I all have that role and we can start understanding that role right now. In the history of our nation, we have not had many motion, moments like this that everyone's taking a community pause. Take advantage of this pause to ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how you could be a better example of Christ in your family by loving your siblings, by loving your family. And one of the last things I would share with you as we close in prayer is as you close this video and as you have time with your family, think of, try to create a, a list. Take a memo pad and just say, hey, what are some of the favorite things we've enjoyed as a family? Maybe there's some favorite smells that you enjoy related to food. Maybe there's some favorite meals or desserts you make. Maybe there's some favorite experiences that you've experienced. Or maybe there's some that you'd like to experience. Dream a little bit about the future, but also reflect on some great things about the past. And in the process of that, God will take these five areas and grow you, grow your family in ways that God gets much glory. It's going to take some work, but it's worth the work, I promise you. Because there's nothing I enjoy more than driving into my driveway, walking into my home, seeing the blessing of my wife and all seven of my kids. There's nothing like it. And when you get family right the way the Father designed family, he will make you fruitful in ways that glorifies his name. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We need your help. Family's difficult. It's not always easy. But if we are willing to do the work individually, and play a significant positive role in our families, you can do a great work in us and a great work in our family. And during this pause button, you can allow each and every one of our families to come out stronger. But we're only going to come out stronger if we rely on you and follow your lead. So give us strength to do that, Lord. And may we do what you've asked us to do each and every day. And if we do what you've asked us to do each and every day, we have no need to worry about the future because you're shaping us for that future. Each and every day, you give us directional discipleship. So, Lord, teach us, love us, and live through us in ways that make you smile. We pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. We miss you, we love you, and have a great Easter weekend. God bless.
will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I will keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life and you fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your end.
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed that worship set from Jamie and the team. Uh, again, we miss you greatly, but we pray that you're um, using this time wisely, and especially during this Easter weekend coming up, as we celebrate Good Friday, God's amazing good gift to us and his love, and then Resurrection Sunday, uh, as we will celebrate both of those online in a different way, but hopefully a way that will uh, allow us the privilege to see God's love shining through us uh, as we mature in our faith and in our ability to be family the way God designed family. So we hope you've had a great time. Send us your awkward family photos that we'll post next week uh, in the next show that we have. And uh, enjoy this last little segment that Aaron and I are going to uh, close the show with. Um, Lord willing, we'll be alive at the end of it. Have a great week, everybody. We love you. We miss you. God bless. All right. Hey, guys. Well, our uh, last game tonight was uh, maybe a poor choice, as you said earlier. <laughs> We have uh, no chairs in the hub right now. Um, so we're just going to do, uh, let's see. Best of three. Best of three. So we stay um, alive. So yeah. if you get knocked out of the circle, you are out. And the other person gets a point. So uh, you ready to do this, Katie? Yes. It's for the chocolate bunny. <laughs> for the chocolate bunny. For the chocolate bunny. Oh, my goodness. The Peter Rabbit. The <laughs> this is going to end horribly. All, All right. right. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> One down. One down. I one. Wait, wait, wait. I lost my mic. Wait. Oh no, Casey lost his mic. Here we go. Alright. These smell great by the way. <laughs> Alright. Three, two, one, go. Oh. No no! <laughs> Again. Alright, we'll do one more just for kicks. One more, because Casey here to beat me. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> Three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh, beautiful footage. <laughs> 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 <laughs>